Hello, people. Welcome to the Lee Cole 3 podcast. James Proctor is once again here uh, giving me a hand with research. And James, how you doing? I appreciate you being here. Yeah, good to be here. Doing well. Thank you. Well, we have. Uh, let me take this down. I don't know why I got this picture up there. This doesn't, you know, we're going to get to this gentleman right here. But let's put you one second, please. As you can see, we've got some stuff here that we're going to be going over. Okay, James. Okay, so we've been really researching uh, Dominic Ciccali. Would you say that we've been really researching him pretty good since our first, since, since part one? Yeah, definitely. We, we've been able to find a lot of interesting information about Dominic Ciccali. And I want to make this perfectly clear. Dominic Ciccali, to me, is a real gangster. Uh, until well, he gave that away once he, he he became an informant. But in general, would you say that that Dominic Sicali is a was a tough guy or is a tough guy? Yeah, definitely. You know, he he definitely was. He was um, definitely involved in the life. He, you know, he was a capo in the Bonanno crime family. He was close to uh, Vincent Bassanio. He was you know Vinnie Gorgeous. So you know, he definitely did that. He did. Um, did pieces of work uh, for the family. Um, you know, he had a reputation of being a tough guy. So, Bassiano, when you think about Vinny, okay, Vinny, and you, as people know, his nickname is Vinny Gorgeous. And how did he get his gorgeous name? Do you know? Yeah. So, so he he actually is a good businessman, or was a good businessman. So, uh, besides all the illegal activities, he had. Uh, a variety of different businesses, including, you know, like video rental stores back and in the salon, day. And salon. a salon. And so the salon, it was called Hello Gorgeous. And so it was uh, just people started uh, calling him, I guess, behind his back, uh, uh, Benny Gorgeous. He did not like that nickname. Uh, most people would call him Benny from the Bronx. Vinny from the Bronx. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, if I remember Vinny from the Bronx, that was like in a movie. Yeah. Vinny from the Bronx, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so so now Dominic Ciccali, Ciccali, he took him on, uh, mm -hmm. and he wasn't with him for that long. And he trusted him and brought this man on. Right. And uh, at that point, Vinny liked him a lot, didn't he? Yeah, he, he really did. And so uh, it was really interesting how they – got together and, you know, Vinny would put him through a couple of tests. They wanted to see how he would um, react, um, you know, basically in scenario situations. And, um, you know, Sakali uh, passed with flying colors. And so Vinny really uh, became um, able to trust him. And he had some legitimate bodies. I mean, he mm -hmm. was a killer. Yeah. Uh, and he had some charges for that even before he met, uh, uh, Vinny Gorgeous. So also, didn't he get involved with some drug running between with the Rizzuto family up in Canada that doesn't didn't work out? Yeah, so that was uh, one of the his first activities he got involved in was uh, trying to help uh, revitalize that um, drug, drug trade uh, with the Bonanno faction up in Montreal. And so, you know, in the 70s, that was uh, 60s and 70s. That was a, a big deal. You know, Joe Bonanno had gotten with that the, relationship. With the Rizzutos. Mm -hmm. With the Rizzutos. With, the, and with stuff. the Rizzutos, yeah. But, you know, it wasn't going as well. So, you know, there was the opportunity to um, bring in, um, I think, 200 pounds of, of marijuana. And and what ended up happening was the, the people – with Rizzuto's crew got caught. So the, you know, the drugs never uh, made it. And, and they lost so, that money. Uh, yeah. It's like $25,000. Right. Right. And, and then they tried to revitalize it once again, not as much. It didn't work out. So they said the hell with it, but, but yeah. that's, you know, but this shows how much he was being trusted at that time by, by Vinny. Uh, yeah. And th yeah, definitely. But one, one point, you know, something interesting that I didn't realize until, you know, some of this research, uh, there were some questions on the street uh, about Dominic Sakali. And, you know, the people were concerned that maybe he was a rat even then. And the reason for that is that, you know, he got a 10-year sentence 
uh, for murder. So, you know, he had the drug conviction, plus he did a, um, a homicide, uh, a manslaughter is what it was. He killed a guy in a hotel. He said it was self-defense in, self in, in the motel room. Right. And, but he got out in 18 months from, right. from that murder. And so normally uh, people don't get out that, that soon. I don't know if, you know, if he ratted then or not, you know, there's, I don't have that evidence, but the people on the street did um, have that concern about him, but, you know, uh, Vinnie Gorgeous was able to, you know, trust him. He, he said, no, that's not true. And so they continued to. Well, he you know, went on and did a murder him. with Vinnie, didn't he? Yeah, exactly. He, he did a murder with Vinnie. And so, um, yeah, he, he was trusted. He's a vital part of that uh, crew. And so, so explain what happened when Vinny gets arrested. Vinny gets arrested. First of all, you have probably the worst rat in history who was yep. the head of the Bonanno family. Well, start with that and explain how this worked out. Yeah. So, you know, for what's interesting is that up until, you know, the early 2000s, the Bonanno family was the one family that had, had never had a made guy um, turn, you know, the, all the other families had had made guys, uh, become informants. The, you know, the Bonanno family did not. And so, um, you know, so, so, so Joe Messino gets busted, right? Yeah, he got busted, but there was, uh, several others that got busted too. So, uh, his brother-in-law who was also his, um, underboss uh, got got picked up as well and so uh per, and there were several captains got picked up so pretty much the whole administration got uh picked up on racketeering charges and you started seeing um all of these uh guys uh turn and you know including salvatore uh, vitale which was the brother-in-law and underboss of the family and, and so, nobody thought that a guy like joe messino would flip but he did and what, yeah. the thing, bad thing about joe messino when he flipped he started uh wearing wires and trapping people in prison yeah so, he, he was yep and he didn't even he flipped actually after he was found guilty and so uh, he was concerned, you know, because there was a murder uh, rap was part of it, conspiracy, all of that. And and so the death penalty was on the card. So and what do you do? Because here's the reality of it. Yeah. Nobody gets the death penalty and dies and feds. No. It, happens, it hasn't happened in years. They no. use that for excuses. Oh, the death penalty was out there. No, yeah. what it meant is you're going to be in lockup anyway. Mm -hmm. It's a death penalty. You're not going to be put to death. And, no. and, and a few people have said this, the death penalty is out there. Okay, the death penalty is out there, but it was out there also uh, uh, for Vinnie Gorgeous. Yeah. And, and yeah, the jury it definitely rejected, was. And the jury rejected it. Yeah, exactly. And so, yeah, and that, that's what, the, what the, the issue was on that. You know, he, he ended up, uh, besides turning, he was a boss. He turned, but he also uh, wore a wire in the the prison. And, and he was just wearing a wire. Then, then, you know, here's the feds putting these guys together, and uh, they're trying to get Vinnie Gorgeous to ad admit to some murders on there, but he said a bunch of other stuff Yep. Uh, on, on, on the wires. Yep. And uh, so you had Messino not only doing that, he was doing it to other people too. So, you know, here's yep. this little sneaky rat. Uh, running around the prison system, being totally wired up, uh, getting people. I mean, you've heard of people ratting, mm -hmm. but to the extent of Joe Messina with the with the wires in prison, that that really yeah. was uh, something different, wasn't it? Yeah, uh, you know, I'd never heard of that before, especially with someone at the level of of Joseph Messino, and so just uh, just really. Uh, uh, bizarre to me, but just showed his his character. And then, um, you know, the guy, you know, basically had uh, life in prison without parole, but he gets out in 2013. So Messino's out on the street. He got yeah. out. And, and he's been and out. He's still years. alive. He's a sick man, yeah. but he's mm -hmm. still alive. The fact of the matter is he was the boss. He was the mm -hmm. one that all these guys underneath worked for, including Vinny uh, Gorgeous. 
And once again, yeah. it's a boss that's turning on their people. Now, Vinny, uh, when Vinny was arrested, he basically said that there's no honor in the mob no more. Didn't he say that? Yeah, he did because, um, you know, everyone around him uh, flipped. You know, his bosses flipped, his colleagues, other capos um, flipped. And then his his best friend and brother, um, Sakali flipped and that and that really um that that really put him over the edge you know now, he just couldn't yeah. believe that would happen now sakali gets pulled in and what mm -hmm. happens when sakali gets pulled in he pretty much flipped right away didn't he yeah yeah so he got uh so he was in there for it's kind of like uh sammy the bull so sammy was in for i don't know about almost a year before he flipped and it was it was kind of similar with uh with sakali and I know that Sakali has uh, said the reason uh, that he he flipped was that uh, he was I guess there was some tapes that were played before the defense and and he was calling um, so Vinny Gorgeous was calling Sakali you know a, a thug but it was more in it wasn't in a bad way he's basically saying yeah he's a thug but he's my thug and basically saying he's someone that you know I can depend on. But then apparently he was getting, you know, Sakali saying that uh, Vinnie Gorgeous was uh, abusing him in in prison, was saying, you know, was just uh, disrespectful and everything. And then uh, Sakali uh, lost faith in the, you know, oh, in the mafia. Okay. So, so yeah. Sakali said he lost faith in everything. But mm -hmm. you know something, we're gonna, we're, this is one thing we're going to get into. We're going to get into the fact that Sakali – even after he put Vinny uh, Gorgeous away, went after the family, and he tried to uh, frame. Uh, and we're going to get into the frame right now of Vinny Gorgeous when he tried to frame him, and how yeah. that information's been held back to by the government. And uh, explain this to me right here. Uh, I'm going to put this up on the screen. Yeah. Okay, and you know what this is, right? Yep. Okay, now start explain that to me what that is. Okay, so so basically it's a it's a case uh, between Anthony Donato. Anthony Donato was uh, was involved in uh, the life with Vinny Gorgeous. They were and he has a murder char charge that he's fighting. And uh, yep. Mm -hmm. and, 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 okay, so explain exactly what uh, it was that uh, Dominic Sakali did in prison and why he's, he, he put this up, why he uh, put this into the courts. Right. And so Donato is, is, is basically been requesting this information through the freedom of information act. And he wants to have a new trial because uh, a key witness, uh, Sakali has been proven to uh, lie. And, and there was incidents that occurred that, he feels it is very important to be out there. He needs to understand. Donato wants, and his attorneys wants to see what that information is about. And so we do get, um, at least in this request to Judge Jackson, uh, what what happened. And so there's an alleged MCC murder conspiracy plot. And so Dominic Sakali, uh, you know, was in MCC in New York. And, and he's a participant in the Bureau of Prisons Witness Security Program. And so, yeah, so yeah, so he's in WITSAC at this time. Yeah, at that and time. He's, and he's already put. He's and this already, is 2006. Right. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Uh, he's already put um, this guy away, um, Vinnie Gorgeous. He's already put him away. Yeah. Right. Yep. On the on the first murder, uh, he's already uh, been put put away. Um, not the second one uh, with uh, Palazzo. So the so there's still the second trial, and so this happened between the trial, you know, where Vinnie Gorgeous was found guilty of the one count of murder, and and before the second one. But anyway, um, what what's being said here in the background is that um, Sakali was uh, ordering other Witsec inmates to create mischief in the unit. For instance, spilling coffee on the floor prior to an inspect inspection. But then the most pertinent 
information is, is that in addition, and significantly for present purposes, in June of 2007, Sakali allegedly attempted to frame Vincent Bassanio, Vinnie Gorgeous, uh, not, and... Not, not Bassanio. Yeah, attempted to frame him in a BOP correctional office. No, officer. you mean Vinnie Gorgeous. You said Vinnie Bassanio. Yeah, Vinnie Gorgeous, Vincent. Asciano. Asciano. Asciano, yeah. Okay. Well, you having trouble? Boy, they make fun of me for having mis mispronouncing. Yeah. Bassiano. Yeah, Vincent Bassiano. 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 Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, go ba on with that. Vincent Bassiano, okay, and a BOP correctional officer, Marco Santomaggio. <laughs> Yeah, let, right? to, yeah let, us, let us Anglos play with those word, those Italian names now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, they so anyway, what happened was is that Sakali asked another inmate, Carlos Medina, to tell government employees that that uh, the correctional officer had hired him to kill Sakali on behalf of Vinny Gorgeous. So he's okay. trying to set up this thing where the correction officer is in the unit, basically. Yeah, it's a correction officer in the unit. Yeah, is trying to kill him because mm -hmm. Vinnie Gorgeous has has pretty much uh, ordered the hit. Yeah, and uh, and, and so this Carlos Medina would be the one to uh, you know to kill Sakali, which you know none of that's true. But anyway, what happened? So instead of carrying out this nefarious request, uh, Medina reported the plot to another correctional counselor, Gloria Black, who prepared a memorandum regarding this uh, alleged murder conspiracy scheme. And then two months later, uh, Gloria Black provided the copy of the memo to a special investigative supervisor. And so they reported to internal uh, affairs and but you know it didn't nothing ever happened from there you know it they disappeared went to, it, they've yeah. been trying but pretty much uh what, what this guy donato is saying here in this uh, uh in this case so he's trying to get it because he knows it was done yeah uh, he knows there was uh, uh there was stuff put out there on this he knows right. that the feds, the feds don't want to release it I wonder no. why the feds don't want to release this uh, stuff. Do you have any idea? Yeah. So Sakali so had, you know, at this point, uh, he had been, and well, even here, this is like 2018, um, this request here. There's been several Freedom of Information Act requests. And so, um, you know, at this point, it's been 12 years since that happened. But, you know, it's been, what, 14 years since uh, Sakali's become a confidential informant and so yeah how would it look for the government if one of your key witnesses uh is found to be a liar he had already been found to lie in the very first trial against Vinny gorgeous and not only not only is he yeah. lying the, the mm -hmm. most important thing here is not only is he lying and the fact is he's trying to set up a man that he's already testified against and try yep. to set him up for uh, plotting a murder against him how low can you get yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't understand the, you know, really the reason for it, except that, you know, this is just him, Sakali, being vindictive. Maybe he thinks that he could get out of the can a little bit earlier. I'm not sure uh, the reasoning, but it just, it's just obvious that Sakali's got it in for Vinnie Gorgeous. And here he is sitting pretty in the Whitsack unit. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, able to uh, hang out with his fellow uh, informants. And yeah. um, then you have another guy at this time who's locked up in Max at 23 hour day lockup, and he wants to stick it to him even more. Yeah. And, and you know, see, and listen, he has the right to come on here and have a show as long as it's legally accepted. He's allowed to make money on here, you know, if, if that's what happens. And he, you know what? He's an interesting guy. It probably is going to happen. Mm -hmm. He's probably going to make money here. His show's probably going to grow, but he's going to do a Sammy Gravano too. He's going to vent his stories. He's not going to talk about the actual stuff. I like to see uh, Dominic Sakali talk about why, why he thought he thought it was good to con uh, to set up a man for murder that he didn't do mm -hmm. a murder plot toward right. him. Right. I mean. 
How low can you get? I mean, yeah. I, you, you hear a lot of things with these informants, but this is the first time I heard about an informant in WITSAC actually making a plot to set a man up, frame a man for uh, killing, uh, trying to kill him, and he knows right. the man's not doing it. Yeah, and and that that's the whole problem with this um, with the WITSAC um, program is that time and time again you get these guys that that lie. I mean, they, you know, they invent stories and you never hear them get, get in trouble for perjury. You know, if it was a normal defendant, they would, they would get charged with perjury. Sure. And, and here's what they would have to do. If you're a normal defendant and you're mm -hmm. plotting to, to set somebody up in the prison system mm -hmm. uh, and they catch you lying and you're trying to get him, uh, get him in more trouble, they're going to bring charges on you. But okay. here, but here with this guy, they don't bring charges on him. He still gets to go home. Mm -hmm. uh, and on top of that, um, this will probably never come to anything because it's too late. But here's what happens if they and, and we have these problems out there. A matter of fact, if you look at Justice Tech Pro uh, with uh, uh, his father uh, at Korea being in prison, same thing. You got these guys out there with the, that are putting up stuff like this where it can flip and overturn a case because. Yeah. How many cases would it overturn? Then you got the domino, Dominic uh, effect. Domino, happening. Effect. domino, Dominic, domino effect happening. Uh, yeah, and so they don't want these cases to go through. They hide these cases. Well, they do, and and the government always has an excuse uh, for why they're not going to allow that information to come out. You know, part of it too is it's easy for them to say, well, uh, Sakali's still uh, providing. Um, sensitive information to the government and it would risk his life or someone else's if if we allow this information so you know they're always able to have that excuse you know it's an excuse not the reality you know nothing's going to happen to so you know to sakali but that's just what you know the government's going to say they don't want it to get out they don't want that bad news out or anything to make them look bad and their case looks bad they they gave him uh, he, you know, basically he, he testified three weeks after he turned, you know, wasn't even much time and the government was coaching him on what to say. And they, the, caught him, uh, they caught him being coached. Yeah. I mean, it was obvious he was being coached and uh, uh, defense even came up with that. Uh, it, it, he was totally being coached. Uh, he admitted to being coached. Yeah. And uh, it was kind of an embarrassment at that time. But also, then you had him. Tell us about the John Gotti Jr. thing. He testified in the fourth trial against John Gotti Jr. with uh, with a guy named Joey DiArco, who was yeah. uh, a driver for John Gotti Jr. And what did yeah. they say when they uh, testified against John Jr.? Yeah. And first of all, uh, Sakali's never met uh, John Gotti Jr. But Never. Never no. met him. Knew Basically, this was a hearsay thing. Yeah. And, uh, so, hearsay. so, what did they say at the? What did they say during that? Trial? Yeah. Yeah. So basically, what they were saying was that uh, John Guy Jr. was working with Vinny Gorgeous to kind of have a common defense where they both would say, "Oh, well, we haven't been involved in the mafia for you know ten years or whatever." And so, basically, trying to uh, you know say that you know that these charges basically you know the statute of limitations on most items outside of murder there's a time limit so that's the reason for it but that's just uh what sakali is saying and you know and that it, and and that wind up being uh didn't uh, work well it was it was a hung jury basically yeah and, and then mm -hmm. they went on to another trial but the fact of the matter is it didn't work uh, once right. again sakali came out he was not believable Right, uh, he wasn't especially believable. with the fact that he did not even know who John Gotti was. It was a hearsay. He yeah. heard it. He says he heard it. Uh, and so that was an attempt to go at Junior. So this guy put, you know, so Dominic Sakali was in, you know, we talk about these people in these whole high pro profile. Uh, let me get this down real quick. In these high profile trials going at the high profile guys. Mm -hmm. And Dominic can. Uh, Scully was only made for how long? A couple of years. Yeah, so he was made in in two thousand three, and so yeah, by two thousand, 
just two years, less than two years, about 18 months. Then he's running, then then he's having trouble on the street because he's trusted so much by by Vinnie Gorgeous that Vinnie Gorgeous basically uh, created some conflict on the street. Be- explain that. Yeah, so a couple of things on that. So one, uh, there was, uh, my, you know, Mikey knows, uh, Mike, Michael Mancuso, who's, you know, the current boss, allegedly of the Bonanno family, he was the street boss, uh, or acting street boss when Vinnie Gorgeous was, was in, in jail, in prison. And so, uh, Sakali was the messenger. So, you know, the orders coming from Vinnie Gorgeous would, would go through Sakali. And, and Jackie Knows resented this, didn't he? Yeah. Michael Knows resented that. Yeah. And what was the main reason he resented it? Well, I mean, a couple of reasons. One, you know, he wasn't sure uh, how that information was coming. Was it true? Was it not? You know, it, that's one. Also, uh, Sakali was 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 developing a a bad reputation during this time because he he let the power get to his head, and so. He was known to be rough with others. He would have people beat. He he did a lot of things that was uh, aggressive, and so uh, it was. You know, he wasn't getting the respect from you know from the other uh, Bonanno family folks, and so that was uh, part of the issue as well. So when he went down, when he finally got uh, arrested, and he went down, I don't think too many people on the street was surprised that he flipped so easy. No, because there was already that um, thought that he had already flipped before. Okay, so now, okay, so now he's out with this show, and he's going to come out and say what he wants to say. Mm-hmm. I like to say one thing. Okay, you got your show, uh, Dominic. Uh, so, uh, are you going to? Can you explain why you tried to set this man up and and frame him for? Uh, uh, an attempted murder or putting a hit out on you and uh, doing it for, I don't know what reason it could possibly be. What, what that's, see, that's the thing that gets me, James. I don't know why he would do this. Yeah. I, I don't understand it either because, uh, you know, Vinnie Gorgeous was already never going to see the light of day. Yes. He was there for life. Uh, and there's, there's no reason except to get back at Vinnie Gorgeous. That's the only other reason. Um, I know that also supposedly uh, Sakali had mentioned uh, that Vinnie Gorgeous was going to kill his girlfriend at one time because this was involving a a woman that Vinnie Gorgeous was involved with. uh, And there was a kid involved, all that All Mm -hmm. this this gossipy stuff. Yeah. uh, That was put out. But there was no evidence that that ever happened. No, there wasn't. That was Dominic Sakali saying it. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying is he says this stuff that there's no evidence of it. And so, um, you know, he'll try to justify, you know, these actions based on other lies is what I'm trying to say. And uh, I like to say, Dominic Sakali, this is the man you put in prison in uh lockup i mean that's 23 hour lockup right there that's a cage my man that he gets to go into while you're free out in the street because this man respected you and loved you like a brother he said when you testified against him that he was devastated because he he thought this guy was like a brother to him didn't he yeah yeah definitely so yeah and and that's the sad part and and then here's what's worse and we talked about this our previous video, then he messes with the family trying to extort money from them. Mm -hmm. And once again, that goes nowhere. Explain that extortion attempt once more that he went toward, that he tried to get out of the family. Yeah. So, so basically he was saying that he had evidence that could get uh, Vinnie Gorgeous released from prison. And so he was uh, going through um, a family friend of, of the, the children. And so, uh, Basically, he was uh, wanting this guy to be an intermediary, but eventually uh, uh, Sakali spoke with one of the kids over the phone at the floor shop. And, uh, you know, he knew the kid knew that 
something wasn't right about that. But, you know, they did have a couple of conversations. I believe a private investigator got involved. They um, got tapes of some of the conversations that was reported to the feds. But again, nothing was done about it. And you could understand them having the conversations with them because it's their father. Yeah. You know, and they figure maybe, just maybe, that something can come from it. And uh, it was just another, it seems like it was just another hustle. So, yeah, you know, it was. Yeah. That's, for some that's reason, to me. For, no, for some reason, uh, Dominic Chicali seems to think that messing with this guy, guy while he's in prison, trying to set him up, then going and mess with his family is okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, to me, it's just, it's just the lowest of the lows. It's just, uh, he just continues to make these choices that make him look very negative, in my opinion. And then, you know, when they, when they couldn't get uh, the murder charges in the first trial on Vinny, they got him on conspiracy, a bunch of other stuff, and he wanted to put life. But then the second trial, uh, why don't you explain what went on here with uh, uh, Radoff Pozzolo? Yeah, Pozzolo uh, was an associate of the Bonanno family, so he was involved in some of the construction projects. Um, you know, I think he did a piece of work, um, is a botched murder against uh, a, a Gambino crime associate back in 2002, but Pozzolo was murdered in 2004, supposedly on orders from Vinnie Gorgeous. And so this guy, Pozzolo, was, uh, had a reputation of, I guess he was scamming people, doing bad or shoddy renovation jobs. Um, he was making disrespectful claims and insults against the family. And so um, it was actually Mikey Nose carried, carried on the order or carried out the order, uh, but um, Sakali arranged uh, the murder. Yes. And, and and so when this guy was murdered, they didn't, you know, so in 2006, uh, Vinny, got, uh, so uh, Vinny uh, gets con uh, convicted on racketeering, conspiracy, mm -hmm. running a gambling operation and had conspired yeah. to kill an associate, David right. Nunex, in 1985. That was other charges they got him on. But right. they did not get him, you know, so so they hit him with this in 2011. Mm hmm. And this was the final nail in his coffin. And yep, uh, yep. he got a second life life sentence. And you know, besides uh, Sakali uh, testifying on this, uh, Joseph Messino uh, testified about it. And so these were were some of the um, what you call it the the tapes. There was some of the tapes from prison that uh, Messino had actually, I guess, what do you call it, uh, tape the conversations between him and Vinnie Gorgeous. So that was yeah. where some of that came in. And, the, and on May 16th, 2011, uh, they got, uh, uh, they basically got him on murder. And, uh, mm -hmm. and, and yeah, it, it took about six years to, yeah, to finally get him on that, that final murder. And then, you know, those tapes were kind of interesting that uh, Messino the, the Messino tapes of Vinny. And so this is one of the things that Sakali's using as his excuse for uh, ratting on uh, Vinny Gorgeous was on the tape, Sakali is mentioned as a member of organized crime. Yes. But so what? I mean, that's not. The, yeah. Yeah. He's know. saying the feds didn't know anything about me until uh, Vinny Gorgeous was caught on tape saying that Sakali was a member of organized crime, but that's his boss. So and it was how would come Benny out, know? It was going to come out too, because everybody was being arrested. That was in, in that part of the family. Somebody else would have said it. It's, it's just one of those excuses that informants use why we yeah. informed, you know, he was saying right. bad things. He actually didn't say really bad things about him. He said that uh, wow. he was a thug. He's my thug. Yeah, and, exactly. uh, whether whether Dominic likes this or not, he's a thug. Yeah. He's a murderous thug. Yeah. You know, it, the, the reality is that he's nobody to mess with out on the street. He wasn't back in the day. And, uh, but now you're on YouTube. You could be messed with. And the mm -hmm. truth could be put out there. Yeah. And that's what we're doing right now. And uh, you can reply to it. You can answer it. But, you know, there's other stuff coming down the line too 
with, with uh, Mr. Sakali. So he yeah. has to understand that too, because uh, there's some other research being done, and I think he knows on why. Yeah. Uh, but it never surprises me, um, you know, because here he is. Then he goes to the family. He tries to get that money from the family. Right. He goes on and uh, at a hearsay, he sits, gets on the stand and he testifies against John Gotti Jr. Yeah. So you wonder, you know, so why are we supposed to believe what this guy says now? What do you think? Uh, because we're talking about, you know, he got out of prison, you know, eight, nine years ago. Right. Um, and then he's done some things since then. And we'll get into those other things he's done since then. Yeah, it's just continue. That, that's, you know, you don't see a, you don't see anyone that's been rehabilitated. You don't see someone that's changed. It, you know, it's, you know, you have to be very suspect about a, a person that continues to make these uh, bad decisions going down bad choice road, you know. And when you start, when you have your show and the first thing you do is call yourself the family and and, and, mm -hmm. it's, and, and you go at it with, like you call yourself the mafia round table. Yeah. I mean, where's the changes? I mean, you're, you're, it's like John A. Light, you know, I sell baseball bats, you know, yeah. and, and buy my bats or buy my knife set. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Dominic Sakali, you know, very, uh, he's a narcissist. Um, you know, that's, uh, he's glorifying uh, the life. You know, I don't know what his reason for the podcast is. It's obviously money, but I don't know if, you know, if, if he's wanting to have history look at him differently, if he just wants to tell stories, I don't know what his motivation well, is. That money. His stories would be very interesting. Yeah. Don't try to take down a man that you already put away. Right. Don't, why go after the man? He's sitting in prison for the rest of his life and you had something to do with it. Uh, would he have went to prison without your testimony? Who knows? Probably. Right. Uh, but the fact is that you were involved in the testimony and, uh, uh, and then you, then it seems like he had a uh, issue with Jackie the Nose, and so he starts a show, and mm -hmm. puts the story up out Jackie there knows, about yeah. killing him. Right. Yeah, and that that's saying that that there's no evidence of that. The supposed hit team, there's no, um, they're either dead in prison or, you know, no one has ever substantiated that. I don't see how uh, he could get away with, uh, even let's say if that was really going to happen. You can't just kill a, you know, a boss. I can't see Vinnie Gorgeous actually going along with with doing that. You know, especially from from this guy. You know, this guy was not I'm talking about Sakali. Yeah, I mean, he was close to Vinnie Gorgeous, but you know, he was not at the same level as as Mikey knows. You know, Mikey knows had been around uh, for for many years. He had that role of a street boss and. You know, nothing to take away from Sakali, but uh, there's just no way. What was Sakali going to do? Was he going to now be the the boss? You know, it just none of that after was two, true. After it two and a half years, great. you know, this yeah. almost this almost sounds a little bit like uh, Springfield, but we won't get into it. But you know, yeah. there's these guys on the street that it that gets to their it goes to their head, and they think that um, they want the power, but they want the power. And then when they go into prison, what do they do? Yeah, flip them. Flip, yeah. You know, and uh, people say, uh, oh, well, you know, you don't know what you're going to do. Well, I'm not in that position. Are you in that position, James, where you run a, a family and, and, and kill people? No. No, I, I don't. I've never never even been arrested. But when you when you look at it, though, like, you know, for, for me, just looking from an outsider, looking at Vinnie Gorgeous, I, I couldn't imagine. I mean, I would feel like it was a noose going around my neck when everyone around me is is flipping. And Benny, he's I mean, he's he's a stand up guy. He never flips. He never he, he everybody around him flipped. Yes. Everybody around him flipped. Everyone, you know, and and and, and you know, it's like uh, uh, he lived the code of John Gotti, you know. Yeah, they knew they were going away. They knew in the end that they could fight it, but it, you know it, the reality was most likely they were going to lose it. But then yeah. you got your Sammy Gavanos, you got guys like Dominic here that nail that final, to put that final nail in the coffin. 
And a yeah. matter of fact, we talked about this. Dominic has bragged about being the one to put the final nail in his coffin. Yeah, he has. And, and I don't, that's nothing to brag about. I just don't understand. That's a warp logic, in my opinion. So uh, it's going to be interesting to see what goes on here. And uh, we'll do our shows and we'll keep an eye. And uh, if Mr. Sakali says anything that uh, we are have questions about, we're going to talk about it. Yeah, we have many, many more documents that we're we have access to now, and so you know, in fact, we're going to be downloading a lot of them this afternoon. So there's more stuff, more stuff out there. And and you know, uh, we'll watch and see. Yeah, that's what it comes down to. But you know, that's pretty much people. I want to say one thing: if you're watching this right now, and if you have not subbed to my channel, I would really appreciate if you sub to my channel. I'm get coming up on ten thousand. I'd like to get there. Uh, and um, I noticed that my shows, um, half the people watching aren't subbed. So if you're one of those half of people, 50% uh, of the people that have not subbed yet, please sub. Please like the video. And we'll try to put out the best quality we can. James, would, is there anything you'd like to say? No, I mean... Uh, this is a lot of fun with the research. You know, there's a, you know, I honestly never heard much about uh, Dominic Sakali until a week ago. So I didn't even know who he was. Yeah, it's kind of nice. To, it, you know, it is refreshing to get a new voice out there. You know, uh, you know, hopefully he can be honest with what he's doing. But it is nice to get another voice, get someone to talk about that era. We don't know. We don't hear many people talk about the early 2000s and the Bonanno family. Yes. So it's pretty interesting. Stuff, and here's, here's the thing, James. Would you say that Vinny Gorgeous was the real, the last real street boss? Yes. Yeah, I mean, he he is. You know, now everything's uh, totally uh, different. You know, people are shelved instead of um, taken out. Um, a lot of things are done on, on, on online. A lot of things yeah. are done, you know, uh, they're, they, they even do gamblings with, with yeah. the machines uh, online. God knows what they, you know, these guys still got their hands and things, but the street, the street mob is dead. Yeah. And, yeah. You don't have it. it it's so, it, I mean, you still got the mob obviously, but yeah, everything is uh, kind of, you know, online or they're, you know, they're, had rackets from years ago but a lot of the vices now are uh legal and plus you got a camera on every corner so it's kind of hard to do stuff like you used to and when it and back then it just started out uh with the cameras mm -hmm. and stuff but it wasn't there you gotta remember the bronx you know the area of the bronx they were is a very rough section i mean these guys that grew up in the bronx were tough, tough guys you know oh. i lived i worked on east tremont uh, for two years and this was okay. back in the 80s Mm -hmm. uh, 86, 87, uh, I worked in East Tremont. Oh, wow. So, you know, it's, that was a rough area. And, um, the Bronx, these guys in the Bronx that were raised in the Bronx, they, they were some tough dudes. And, yeah. And that and, crew was known as being very tough. So nothing to take away from that crew. You know, that was a nothing tough to take crew. when it comes to toughness away from Dominic, nothing to take. No, it's like I said, I'll say it a thousand times. The men is a tough man. Yeah. Everything I read about him showed he was a tough man. And that is why he was respected by Vinny. Yeah. But people had questions on the street about why he did such a short amount of time for a mm -hmm. manslaughter charge for 10 years down in Florida. It was a yeah. huge question on that. Yeah. You know, it's it's unusual when you only do that in much, much time. Yeah, you know, 18 but, months. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure that he'll probably talk about that, too. But mm -hmm. you know what, Dominic Chicali, we're going to give you lots of things to talk about. So you don't have to worry. Yeah. And uh, that's our job. That's what this channel's about. Yeah. Is uh, This channel's about uh, talking about the guys that come out uh, like you. But guys like you, Dominic, have very exciting lives that you could talk about. But the problem is that every time you guys talk, you want to talk about why I became a rat. Instead of just coming out and saying, I became a rat because I was scared, I was afraid, and uh, and start and stop making excuses about the men you put away. Right. And there's only one guy on here, and I'm not going to mention his name because people think I kiss his ass, but there's only one guy on here that is an informant, 
says he's informed and doesn't go against the people he informed against. Right. Why do you think these informants want to go against the people that they put in prison to make themselves feel better, to, to have good excuses why they inform? Yeah, revenge. Yeah, well, it's revenge. You know, they it's their ability to have power over that person that supposedly slighted them or, or whatever. But yeah, it's just revenge. It's power. It's to make them feel like they have some sort of authority. It, it's all that type of stuff. Narcissism, you yeah. And and it's like uh, Dominic says that that Vinny Gorgeous uh, wrote him hard and uh, you, you know and yelled at him and but this is what the bosses do to their underlings. Yeah, yeah. From exactly. the beginning of time, nobody rode people as hard as John Gotti, no. or you know you don't think the Chin rode people hard or or Joe Messino uh, or when they, these guys were head of the families. Heck, we had three captains killed. Right. You know. The mob life ain't no joke. Dominic no. Chicali, you have a very exciting life. Talk about your life, man. Stop going after the people that you put away. You put them away. They're there for life. You're out here with the ability to get onto YouTube and make some money and tell your story. Let's hear your story. What will you say, James? Would you, would I that agree. Yeah, I agree 100%. And, and I am interested in, in hearing his story, hearing more. Yes, and I would say that only because he was definitely uh, like uh, if um, Vinny uh, Gorgeous calls you his thug, that means you are a thug, dude. That means yeah. you were a street guy. Yeah, that means you're a tough guy because uh, the last of the street bosses said you were. Yeah, and um, so with that, I like to say thank you, James, for being here. Yeah, thank and, you. Uh, and so we'll put something out. We're working on something new and we'll be putting something out. We're always continuously putting out videos now. Yep. The channels <laughs> we're growing quick now with the because we're putting out a good amount of videos and people are enjoying them and watching them for a long time. Uh, hopefully we could pick up our view count and start getting 10,000 a video instead yep. of three or four or five. Yeah. Okay. But James, thank you a lot for being thank here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Yeah, appreciate and, it. And that hit that like button. Sub if you have not subbed, people. Oh, and also, just so you know, people, uh, I'm underneath here. I'm going to put my link if you want to send me a cash app, donate to the channel. There's also a heart underneath here. You could do that uh, because these shows take time to work on. Uh, I don't come online begging for money. Uh, I do very few lives, and this is how I do it. So, and also, if you see commercials, Please watch the commercials because that's how I get paid. I would really appreciate it. Okay. Okay, James, let me end yep. this. Thank People, you. thank you and take care.